So I am a libetician. It's my term that I coined. I've been a dietitian for over 20 years. And back in 1994, when I became a dietitian, I'm like, die, dietitian. I don't like this root word. I don't like the shorish, die. I don't want to help people die. I want to help people live. So I do livets instead of diets. Um, no dying, no deprivation. I mean, diets, like, diets don't work. It's all about, it preaches extremism. People come to see me, oh, I had my last meal before I came in. I know it's my last meal. I can't, and you can't have all these food groups. And, and so that's not true. That's not the route we need to go. To be able to make change, to be lean and hot, to be able to live younger, longer, to be, have, you know, disease prevention, we can eat what we enjoy. Part of the definition of eating is enjoying. So I do live it. Um, and so the synopsis of what we'll talk about tonight, I'm going to talk about efficiency eating. That's another term that I coined a phrase. And oxygenation. And my favorite health guru, Maimonides, mindful Maimonides. And so first of all, the efficiency eating. We want to be efficient in our life, right? We want to make the most of our time. Life is precious. Time is precious. So I want you to make the most of your eating time. We all need to eat. And so efficiency eating is getting the most nutrients per bite. Or if you're drinking a smoothie, the most nutrients per sip. And smoothies, by the way, are nutrient density efficiency eating at its finest. That's definitely my favorite food is a, a green smoothie. Um, so nutrient density is getting the most nutrients per bite. The timing of eating is also efficiency eating. So people that, you know, wait all till noon or 1 o'clock till they finally eat, that's not helpful for efficiency eating. We want to eat within an hour to an hour and a half after waking, about every four hours throughout the day. This is to prevent that under-fueling, overloading that I see with my patients all the time. Um, I had several patients today that were doing this. They're wondering why they're fatigued, why they have no energy, and they're wondering, you know, why they're going to a meal starving and needing everything. It's because their timing is off. And then also balance. So balanced eating is important. So we'll be talking about that a little bit more. So what constitutes balanced eating? Just really quick, what do you think balanced eating is? One person. Carb, protein, and fat. Excellent. Love you. <laughs> a lot of people think that a balanced meal is grilled chicken on a salad. That's not a balanced meal, okay? You're missing the fuel. And that's what I see, the trends with my patients. I'm, I mean, back in 1994, the, the trend was everyone was over-carbing. Now I'm seeing everyone's over-fatting and under-fueling. That's what's happening now. People are so scared of carbs. And not to, I'm not going to say names, but it was so funny when I was talking and schmoozing before we all started. I was speaking to this guy, and, um, and he was having a little memory issue. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe you need to have some more carbs. You're not fueling your brain, and we need carbs. That's our source of glucose. And he's like, oh, I can't do carbs. I'm like, what about some fruit? Oh, I do fruit. <laughs> So it was so funny. He doesn't, didn't realize that fruit is a carb. So, <laughs> um, but I'm not pointing any fingers. But that's what I'm going to help you all out with, that fuel is important. We need it. And so fuels are carbs. Protein is our other way that I describe it. Protein's your sustainer because carbs are quickly absorbed. They're gone in about three hours. So we need to eat our protein with our carbs. That's going to sustain you. That's going to help you stabilize those sugar levels. You'll feel fuller longer. So when you eat that apple, also grab some almonds and sunflower seeds with it. That's a balanced snack. And we want that fat. That's our satisfier. Fat slows the absorption rate of the sugar, and you'll feel fuller longer. So we still need some fat. Obviously, you want to have healthy fats. And so I'm going to talk about what the healthy carbs are. I'll just talk about, you can look at my book. There's 200 superfoods. So um, that will save your life. And they're all kosher, by the way. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the three carbs, the top three carbs. So that's our top fuels, OK? OK, carbs. <laughs> You're going to learn about what carbs are. <laughs> OK. Um, so artichokes are my number one. So my two favorite foods you'll hear about today. But artichoke is my number one favorite 
food in terms of a carb, your best carb source are artichokes. They give you 33 grams of carb in one medium artichoke. 33 grams of carbs, 16 grams of fiber, and 10 grams of protein. Pretty cool, right? And people don't think of them as fuel. And artichokes are amazing, high antioxidants. And how would you make it a perfect balance? Put a little bit of hummus. Dip it with a little bit of hummus. Get that Israeli flair, taste, satisfaction. And apples, another top carb. Out of, out of all the fruits, they, they looked at 40 different fruits, um, but the apples are the highest in quercetin, and that's a flavonoid that increases your immune system. It actually prevents allergic reactions. It can help reduce allergic reactions. It actually increases your immune system, anti-inflammatory, and it's an excellent source of pectin, that fiber, so it helps normalize your bowels. It helps lower your cholesterol level because of the pectin. And in terms of the reducing inflammation, it's amazing to reduce your inflammation because they're correlating every single disease state out there with inflammation. Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, all with inflammation. So to get a food that helps reduce your inflammation is amazing. And so um, what do you think about those apples? <laughs> um, so th those are amazing, OK? Those apples are phenomenal. That apple a day keeps the doctor away is true. How do you like those apples? Did I say it right? <laughs> OK. <laughs> okay. Blueberries, the number one power food, the antioxidant power food. They looked at, here's. 40 different fruits and vegetables, blueberries were the highest in antioxidants. This is nutrient density. This is efficiency eating. It's like, I call it the high octane eating, okay? Highest octane fuel are blueberries. They're high in anthocyanins, so they're really great antioxidants that help reduce disease. They're really good for urinary tract health, so a good partner with cranberries. And they also reduce inflammation, and um, they're just amazing fuel for you. But how would you balance it? With some, no, hummus is a fat. <laughs> you would balance it with some protein. So protein with fat, but clove, blueberries and hummus, yuck. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about the protein. This is what you'd want to balance the blueberry with. Oh, also blueberries are cancer protectors, and also um, apples are. Those are all cancer protectors, too. Okay, so proteins, top three proteins. Here we go. Black beans, that's my other favorite food. So artichokes and black beans. When people say, oh, Deb, you're 200 superfoods, what is your favorites? Artichokes and black beans. That's efficiency eating, those two foods. Black beans are amazing. They are more antioxidants, 10 times more than oranges. 10 times more than oranges in terms of antioxidants. And they also have fiber, they have protein, so they're a great high fiber fuel, so it'll help lower your sugar level. So it's perfect for people that have diabetes. It actually stabilizes your, your sugar level. And people that are paleolithic eaters, sorry guys, <laughs> but being the paleo diets, if people don't know, they're like, oh, beans, no way. They think beans are a horrible food. It's ridiculous. As a levitician, I say beans are the healthiest food on earth. They really are. It's because they're giving you the antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. They're lowering your cholesterol. They're giving you fiber. They're giving you a great protein source, which we need to sustain us. And there's no fat, so we have room for our hummus. <laughs> and we have room for some guacamole, which we want to have with our beans. And the second power food for protein are egg whites. Egg whites have the highest protein efficiency ratio. The highest biological value protein, that's our reference protein, is albumin. So egg whites, the best, most perfect food. And a whole egg is really awesome too. God knows what's up. He made a perfect food. So yolks are okay, up to four yolks a week are fine for people with high cholesterol because the yolks also give the iron and the vitamin D so and the biotin. So we do want to have um, a whole egg. But egg whites, if you're going to eat eggs every day, go for the whites. Egg whites every day are fine. Excellent protein. And the third, it's a haddock. Haddock fish. 
It's a white fish, and it's the lowest mercury fish out of all the fish. It's the lowest in mercury. And so and it's kosher, of course. And um, so you can tell by there's like a little, on the fish, when you look at a haddock, there's a black line on it. That's how you can, that's a distinctive mark about haddock. And so it's anti-inflammatory, excellent source of omega-3s. You all know about omega-3s. We need those for our heart health, reducing inflammation, good for our skin, our hair. So, and it's an excellent, complete protein. It has the whole necklace of amino acids. It gives us a complete protein like the egg whites do. But the beans, by the way, aren't a complete protein. They don't give us the whole necklace. We need a little bit of nuts and seeds with it. People that have diabetes, I don't recommend you combine it with grains because that's double carbing. So have it with some nuts or seeds. So like a big salad, some black beans, and some sunflower seeds. They're your gorgeous meal. Um, but the haddock is complete by itself, so all it would need is some fuel, right, and some veggies. So have it with a little small yam or an artichoke and some veggies. Top three fats are walnuts. That's the number one nut. Out of all the nuts, walnuts are the highest in antioxidants, excellent source of omega-3s. But again, they're not a complete protein, but it's an excellent fat source high in the unsaturated fat and those omega-3s we need for our heart health and reducing inflammation. Um, so what you'd want to combine with the walnuts is some sunflower seeds or peanuts because peanuts are a legume. So when legumes are combined with nuts, that's also a complete protein. So a balanced snack some blueberries and some walnuts and pumpkin seeds, some pepitas. That would be a gorgeous balanced snack for you. Sustaining, keeping your sugar levels stabilized, keeping you energized all day. And then avocados, of course, excellent fat source, great unsaturated fat, good for our skin, and, um, and, but keep it in moderation. Everyone, all my patients who eat, eat avocados are overfatting. They're having, oh, I had a whole, you know, a whole avocado in my bean burrito, or I, you know, half of an avocado on my salad, one eighth, one wedge of an avocado is five grams of fat. That's equivalent to a teaspoon of oil. So watch out, enjoy your avocados, but in moderation. And it's best when you have avocados to not do the mayo too, you know, not do the hummus too. So one fat source per eating time is a good rule of thumb. And these are my third favorite food. I love shelled hemp seeds. They are not, they don't have THC in them. I don't, don't do marijuana, never had in my life. There's no, everyone's worried about that. They're like, oh, I'm gonna get my blood tested. I can't have any drug in me. No, there's no THC in this, okay? This is hemp seeds. It's not the leaf, it's the seed. It's a complete protein. That's what's unique about this seed. It's actually a complete protein and anti-inflammatory. Excellent source of iron for us women and guys too. Um, we need iron. An excellent source of calcium, magnesium, which we need as it's a muscle relaxant. So hemp seeds are my favorite as a protein source. I love adding them in my smoothies. So I put my spinach, my kale, my berries, my shelled hemp seeds in there, some unsweetened vanilla almond milk with water. Yummy. Balanced eating at its finest. And it's also good mixed in cereal. So if you're having your oatmeal and you need some protein, you don't feel like having eggs, you don't feel like having nuts, stir a little shelled hemp seeds in there. And it's great. My patients love putting it in their spaghetti sauce. Um, they'll have like a quick protein. You don't need the beef. You can just put in your shelled hemp seeds. And you'll, you'll see that those three proteins, right? I didn't talk about any meat. No meat source. I'm not anti-meat, but Meat, bottom line, even if it's grass-fed beef, it still has arachidonic acid in it, which stimulates that inflammatory cascade effect. When you have arachidonic acid, you get those prostaglandins, those leukotrienes, those pro-inflammatory cytokines. I love that. <laughs> I love my nutrition verbiage, but it's fun, fun language. Anyway, that in, is inflammatory, so bottom line, as I'll talk, Maimonides says red meat's the most inflammatory food on earth. But we can have meat, okay? We can still have meat, but what I tell all my patients is if you want to have your meat, try to do one meal vegetarian. So at lunch, do your grilled fish or your chipotle salad, have black beans, lettuce, a little bit of rice, a little guac, pico de gallo. And then your dinner, go ahead and have your palm amount. Your health is in your hands, zero portion sizes. God gave us our portion sizes. So your palm amount of protein of meat with your 
little butternut squash and your veggies, okay? Unlimited veggies, that's free food. Have as much veggies as you want, the true veggies, so broccoli, kale, spinach, bok choy, asparagus, cucumbers, salsa. Have as many veggies as you want, unlimited free food. Okay, so not the starchy vegetables, so not the yams, the potatoes, the lima beans, sugar snap peas, those are carbs. But these true veggies are unlimited. Enjoy great fiber, amazing antioxidants. You've all heard seven servings of vegetables a day reduces your risk for cancer by 50%. That's pretty awesome, right? There's a lot of power, hand-to-mouth action. We have a lot of power. So oxygenation, this is really important. My question was, what's the most proactive action you can do to help increase your health, to help nourish, support optimal health? What's the number one action you can do? Wow, you guys are smart. <laughs> it's diaphragmatic breathing. Out of all my patients, all my patients today, all of them, except for one person because she's owned yoga studios her whole entire life, breathed properly. All of them weren't breathing right. So everyone, put your hand on your tummy and inhale and then exhale. Again, inhale, exhale. Okay, raise your hand when you inhaled if your tummy went out. When you inhaled, if your tummy went in. If you inhaled and your tummy didn't move much. Okay, so that's pretty much pretty common. Not as many people raise their hand saying that their tummy went out. Good job, guys, that when your tummy went out when you inhaled. Pat on the back. <laughs> you did awesome. That's phenomenal. Because that's optimal oxygenation, OK? We forgot how to breathe. It's so basic, but we all are messed up. We are all, we're, most majority of people are warped. Out of my 10 patients a day, eight out of 10, at least, don't breathe right. So the diaphragmatic breathing, go on YouTube, type in diaphragmatic breathing, learn how to breathe. It's the number one stress management technique. A lot of my patients who have low adrenals, the oxygenation, that's the best way to support your adrenals. And my, my motto is, when you're stressed, go to the breath. To get rid of stress, go to the breath. Okay, to de-stress, go to the breath. So that's what, you know, basically, that's really key. Um, there's other breathing techniques I can teach you if you want to talk to me afterwards. I love this deep breathing technique to invigorate me. It's called chaotic breathing. I'll teach you alternate nostril breathing, lowers your blood pressure, phenomenal. Happy to go over that with you. But this is the basic fundamental, is to do soft belly breathing. Inhale, your tummy goes out. Exhale, your tummy goes in. Okay, you got it? You're all optimal breathers. You're going to fully oxygenate your body, energize it, de-stress it. Just that one change is going to lower your sugar level. Just that one change is going to lower your cortisol level. That one change is going to get your abs leaner. You de-stress. That's key. Okay, Mindful Maimonides, my favorite scholar, um, Torah scholar, you know, wrote the Mishnah Torah, amazing MD, phenomenal doctor. He knew so much over 800 years ago. That's when this guy was, was teaching us, over 800 years ago. And what he knew then, we are now validating now. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal man. He's my guru. So Mindful Maimonides, the main is SMS. I'll explain what that is. Sleep, mindful eating, and satisfaction. So we don't want to SMS texting. This is the SMS you want to do. This is what you want to focus on. Okay, so basically what he said is he recommends sleeping. We have eight hours a day. He's like, we have 24 hours in a day, sleep a third of the time. He really recommended eight hours a day. That is what we all need. And that also correlates with reducing the ghrelin hormone, that hormone that stimulates our appetite and makes us hungrier. So people that are obese, they're not sleeping enough. So we want to get minimum is seven hours of sleep a night to reduce that ghrelin hormone so you won't, you know, be as hungry. 
that really is key. So try to get at least seven, but ideally eight. This is my New Year's focus, habit change, um, is to focus on more sleep. So that's important. And then the M for mindful. So those 10,000 taste buds. So we have taste buds in our front of our tongue, the back of our tongue, and also in our epiglottis, that like where the, the larynx is. There's taste buds back there. And so Maimani said, and he even knew this over 800 years ago, that we eat for the throat, he would say. Eat for the throat. So that's really important to chew your food. You know what the research is showing now? Chew our food about 40 times. Have you ever tried this, any of you? Try chewing your food 40 times? It's hard, right? So my goal is at least over 20. If you can at least try over 20 times to chew your food, you'll actually get more nutrients absorbed because our saliva, that's the, the first step of digestion. If you have, enjoy your food, you smell it, give gratitude to the farmers who produced it, thank the, you know, the cook, whoever made it. You know, that you, gratitude, that's actually gonna stimulate your saliva production. That's where amylase is, that's the first step of digestion. So you'll actually get more nutrients absorbed, efficiency eating, if you chew your food well mindful eating, and he recommended that you sit down, and he said lean to the left. So it's not just during Pesach that you lean to your left. <laughs> you want to lean to your left all the time. That's really important when you're eating. And he said sit down, mindful eating. So mindfulness, you know, being present in each moment, that's really important. So get rid of the papers, get rid of the, um, the phone, the texting. We don't want to SMS when we're eating. So that mindful eating and then satisfaction. If you chew your food well, you're gonna get more satisfaction. And if you eat slowly, you know, be present. And that you, um, he recommended that you just try not to, and don't work out like right after you eat. He said, make sure you finish your food, get it nicely digested, and then you can go move. So that's, that's the key notes for um, Maimonides. Is, and there's a lot of other quotes. He says, you know, eat for your, your stomach rather than your eye. So it's important that you enjoy what you're eating, but let's be mindful of our hunger cues. So if you follow the ways we have set forth, I will guarantee that your body will be in perfect shape and remain healthy all your life. So that's, that's the Maimonides um, recommendations to be mindful, and that's, as the Levitician, I recommend that, that you, you know, focus on that nutrient density, the efficiency eating, make the most per bite, eat that balance, make time for yourself, self-care, and go to the breath. Mm -hmm.